and welcome to Bristol Health Cares. I'm your host, Kurt Barwis. I am the president and CEO of Bristol Health. This program, this program is for you. It's really about how you navigate the system of care, how you access care, and it's really about trying to answer questions you may have and really didn't know who to ask. We are gonna to bring to you professionals, doctors, surgeons, other healthcare professionals throughout our system of care. Maybe people that you've never talked to before or met before, but, but the goal is to really help you understand how to access care when you need it. You're gonna enjoy this program. This program is really for you. So what's important is if there is something that you wanna learn about or know about or guess that you'd like me to host on this show, write us, write us and we'll, we'll try to make that happen for you. So enjoy the program, Bristol Health Cares. Hello and welcome to this episode of Bristol Health Cares. I am Kurt Barwis, your host. I am here today with a wonderful guest, Linda Crawford. Linda Crawford works in our home care hospice organization. Linda, welcome to our show. Thank you very much. So Linda, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been at Bristol Health? Um, I've been at Bristol Health for 15 years and 15 in the same years. position, I'm the community nurse liaison for the home care and hospice department. So I go out there and uh, do a lot of the marketing and sales for the home care hospice. Marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. So, so so tell us about home care. We, we, we've heard in another episode about hospice. Sophie was on, did an awesome job. Um, tell us about the home care um, program that we have. So um, the home care program is for patients that can't get out and get services. So we come to their home. May it be the visiting, uh, the nurse or the physical therapist, the occupational therapist, the social worker, the aide, um, all depending, uh, the speech therapist also too. So all those services can be, be provided at home and most of those services are all covered by your insurance. Yeah, so, so how does one go about getting home care if they need it? Um, a patient can call and say they're looking for services, then in turn we'll call their physician. The physician will make a referral to us. Um, the hospital makes referrals. They come from many um, rehab centers, many different areas that we get our referrals from. Yeah, so it's, you know, a lot of times you get this confusion in that, um, you know, I know myself when I, I had a surgery and I was like getting discharged, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be okay at home. <laughs> so I ended up going on our, our home care for, right. uh, you know, for about a week. And it, and it gave me a tremendous amount of comfort that I was not going to be a burden to the rest of my family and that I was going to be okay. Um, do you, do you, does that happen a lot? Yes. So you have a medical professional that's looking at you and then they can call the physician and relay their concerns or no concerns. And a lot of times, Patients just feel if they just have that professional in the home, they don't have to worry about they're all by themselves because yeah. once you get discharged and if you've had a surgery or anything, you know, you're not a medical person, so you're, you're, you have concerns and you don't want to be calling the doctor every five minutes. Is this right? Is this right? Is this right? Yeah. So. so when, so, you know, you were talking about skilled nursing facilities as well, people yep. are coming out and, and, and so how important is it for, it, you know, obviously the patient's involved, but the family as well gets involved in that assessment of whether it's going to be okay or not. Yes, because you can have a patient that says they want to go home and they're really not ready to go home in the sense that, you know, we're limited in what we can do. We come for an hour and we leave. There's still 23 hours in a day. So if you're going home and let's say you're an elderly gentleman and you have just a small little wife and you've had some type of a surgery and she's gonna need to assist you in every part of your uh, yeah. everyday living, it is a problem. So then the family can interject and say, you know, maybe we should go to rehab first and then have home care yeah. after rehab. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of, I mean, everything that you're talking about is a tremendous amount of assessment that goes into a decision to actually be in home care. I do, I have a funny story. There was a, there was a, a family in the hospital. They were, they were talking about wanting to keep, it was the exact same scenario I was talking about. They wanted to keep their loved one in the hospital um, because they didn't think that person was ready to get home. But this person was a smoker mm -hmm. and couldn't smoke in the hospital. So wanted to go home 
went home and then literally it was like two days later they were back in the hospital again because it wasn't and of course they were able to smoke when they they left the hospital not it, it is what it is but i'm just right. saying that you know the family knew the family was absolutely right. sure that and i'm sure you you have other reasons why people want to you know go home but then not necessarily be able to sustain that Right, and and you're hoping that they defer to the expert that's telling them, well, try going to rehab first, and then you can have home care because they don't realize once you're home, you know, the the significant other is in charge of everything, twenty four seven. When you are in a rehab or you're in the hospital, you have three shifts that are going that are seeing yeah. that patient and providing all the services, and they forget that. You know, where does the food come from? Well. Someone's got to make it. Right. You know, either you have to make it or your significant other has to make it. Yeah, I, I just remember um, my wife actually was took was three meals every day, whatever, and, mm -hmm. and I think she was pretty exhausted by the time we were done. But you know, home care came in a lot and helped me, so right. it was really good. Um, so, so it's a big organization, right? So geographically, how far do we go? Um, every town that touches Bristol. So we go as far as Howington, Southington, Unionville, Farmington, um, Plainville, uh, and then on the other way we go to Walcott. It's pretty big, it's pretty significant. It's about 15 towns. Yeah. The other thing that, I, that I've heard a lot about is that, um, so let's say somebody needs tertiary care or, or ends up in a specialty hospital, mm -hmm. um, but they live in those communities. You know, they get, um, when they're ready for discharge, they often will get uh, a list of, of home cares or be directed towards ones that aren't necessarily in our community. So, so they may not see Bristol home care on the list, but every patient has a right to ask for Bristol or the one that they want, right? I Correct. Mean, patient choice always is number it's one. It's always patient choice. Yes. And I think that's hard for patients because they may be um, you know, directed to use one that um, has a strong relationship with an organization, for example, or the physician who's you know, taking care of them has a relationship. So um, it's, it's, I think it's very important for patients to understand that they have a choice, as you just said. It's really important that they have a choice. And sometimes Absolutely. you you find that um, you know the person that's coming out to take care of you because you went to school with them or something right. like that, which you know adds a little bit of comfort to the to the experience. So you, you mentioned a lot of different things, so physical therapy, occupational therapy. So talk a little bit about those things because a lot of people would think, you know, ordinarily they would get those services in a facility, like an outpatient facility or something like that. So it's kind of neat that it's done in the home. Absolutely. So in our organization, we like to always have the nurse assess the patient first and see what their needs are. And then therapy will be the next uh, component that comes in. So let's say they've had a patient that has fallen. And so of course you're gonna have nursing assessing the skin, checking to see any, any situation, medications, all that. And then therapy will come in and say, okay, how do we make you stronger so that we don't yeah. have you fall again? You know, building up the core, doing exercises at home. And really, they'll do all those things at home first because that patient can't go to outpatient. Can't, you know, that yeah. they're limited. So they have to do all the exercises and get themselves stronger before they can move to the next component, which could possibly be outpatient therapy. Yeah, it was interesting yesterday. We had a we have a patient that's on home care right now who was discharged from the hospital hospital last week and um, they wanted to get a consult with one of the specialists and they wanted to do it virtually because to get this patient back to the hospital to do it, it's going to take, you know, um, uh, transportation and everything else. Right. Person's not, not walking or ambulating very well. Um, and so they were afraid they weren't going to be able to talk to their specialist and do a consult, which they was very much following the orders of discharge, like you need to go see this person, this person, this person. And so they, they reached out to me and I, and I went down and talked to the specialist and, and now the specialist is going to do a telehealth visit, Perfect. which is uh, absolutely incredibly important. And I think something that patients may not realize that they can ask for, you know, obviously it depends on what kind of specialist it is, but um, a lot of times in the current environment, now that we've kind of navigated the pandemic and moved to a virtual or a semi-virtual environment, 
uh, it is possible. So, um, and now this patient's gonna be able to continue on with their treatment at home and not have to make that you know, trip, which can be really hard. Yes, um, I, I think the other thing that's new for us is telehealth through the ED. So if we have a patient that's very difficult to get out to even their primary physician and they don't have the capability of the telehealth, then we could try to do that with the ED so that we can try to prevent maybe a rehospitalization. You know, something that the nurse can navigate at home with the use of the physician in the ED at the same time. It's so, it's so amazing that you, now there's a use that I hadn't realized on, but Dr. Lim was on the show oh. uh, in another episode and he was talking about the advantages of the ED telehealth program, uh, you know, being able to, in the middle of the night, you can actually talk to the ER doctor without actually having to go there. And I didn't kind of process how important that would be for home care patients, especially someone that's, you know, coming off of, a, of an acute episode that was, had them in the hospital or at a rehab facility. So. Right. Wow, that's that's really. I mean, and if that's why you're the marketing person. Well, I, I you try it. to think of all the different things, right? <laughs> so, so, um, so, so then, occupational therapy. Talk a little bit about occupational therapy. So, occupational therapy is um, the therapist is going to come in and they're going to do the upper body strength. So lower body is considered physical therapy. Upper body, dressing yourself. Can you do um, make a meal? Um, brush your teeth. No, just. Yeah. It's very simple things, but they're doing all those um, exercises or activities so that you can do daily living activities. Yeah, I thought it was always, and this is my, my naive kind of thought process, and you know, I've been in this business for a long time. I thought it was like occupational therapy, ability to get you back to work. No. So, <laughs> no, but I, I've learned since that it's not, obviously. It's, right. you know, how do you, how do you do those basic things, getting up, going to the bathroom, making your food, brushing your teeth, right. taking your medications, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then if, if someone needs more other things, right, that's all assessed and identified and arranged for, right? I mean, so if they do need to go to their cardiologist or pulmonologist, whatever, yep. those things can happen. If they can't be done virtually, they can, all those things are worked through. Usually if they, let's say they have a cardiac situation, so nursing will take a look and make sure they're following through to see that cardiologist because usually they want to be seen within the first week right. of discharge. So we want to make sure that's happening because we want the doctor to actually get eyes on the person to make sure that, yeah. you know, they're not running into a CHF or any other medical component that can creep up very quickly shortly after being out of the hospital. Yeah, it seems, it, you know, when I think about home care coming in and, and, you know, I got a big, huge package of information and the assessment was really there. And it very much was about reinforcing all the things that were necessary for me to have a successful recovery and to get back to where I was. So, um, and I think that all too often someone leaves the hospital and, you know, just the thought about, okay, I'm going home now, and, and you've got your spouse or your loved one or whoever is your support structure focused on getting all your stuff. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna get you home? How are we gonna get to the next step? And, and uh, there's a lot of you know, times that those detailed instructions are not clear in somebody's mind, and they may miss the point that they've gotta go see their cardiologist, or they may miss the medication change that happened from right. the, and so what I found really incredibly helpful was this, this, the idea that somebody was sitting down with me now in my own home and having a conversation in front of my wife about all the things I was supposed to be doing, and, and then sitting there asking me all those questions about, do you understand this? Is this really, do you, do you, do you know what you have to do? Do you have any concerns about it? When it's not, you know, wow, I'm going home. How am I going to do this? You know what I mean? There's a completely different environment. Not that they don't try and do a good job of it and they don't give you the information. It's it's a whole different story. Well, so. you only hear 20% of what they're saying to you in the hospital. Once you're in your own, <laughs> no, seriously. Once you're in your own environment, you're just, mu much more receptive to the information because you're just, you know, you're under duress when you're usually in the yeah. hospital. There's something going on and it's stressful. So you only hear 20%. Yeah. That's why you usually bring a significant other with you because they hear the other 80. Right. That's just very, very true. So, so, you know, in terms of, you know, the organization, 
uh, home care has gotten just incredible awards. I mean, it's, it's one of the you know, incredibly bright spots of the organization where um, quality, excellence, outcomes is, are just extraordinary. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think the main component is the people that work there. I mean, we just have an excellent staff, and I think everyone gets along really well. The nurses, all the therapists are great. They really enjoy their job. They love seeing the people, and I think that reflects on the the, the quality of service that we provide for them. Yeah, but it's it's very consistent, by the yes. way. I mean, so that's the other thing. So, so how does someone make that decision? So you, you're presented with options, right? So they can, how do they, how do they compare? How do they, you know, as a family member gets engages and, and now your, your significant other, loved one, spouse, child, whatever, is coming out of the hospital, coming out of a rehab post-acute facility and they're presented with options, they've got to make a choice. So how do they make, I mean, aside from the fact that we do an awesome job and we have all these stars on Medicare, how does someone kind of navigate that thought process, well, decision oh, process? A lot of times they'll ask, you know, possibly the social worker or the case manager, you know, tell me a little bit about these agencies. They'll give you the star rating so that, you know, the Medicare, you can look at that and say, okay, this agency is a four star, or five star. So, you know, that's helpful, but a lot of them don't know one agency from the next agency from the next agency. So a lot of times, if you've had any exposure to home care, you usually stick with what you know. So yeah. if they know that you've had this therapist, they, they'll name the therapist and say, we want Mark back uh, and we only want him. You know, so usually yeah. we, most of the agencies know who works for who because it's just that kind of a small community. Yeah. So, so in the day of you know in this age of the internet and you mentioned the medicare star rating system yes. which is incredibly intense to kind of navigate uh it looks at outcomes it looks at um patient satisfaction it looks at um just so many different aspects of of what care is provided and what i find really kind of great about it is if you say you live in this area you can put in your zip code and you can actually compare one agency against the next. Correct. So like in seconds, if you go to the you know, Medicare compare website, you can do the same thing for hospitals, you can do the same thing for any kind of facility that takes Medicare patients. But it's kind of like if you if you wanted to buy a TV and you took you know you see these Best Buy or whatever they are commercials or, or I'm sorry not commercials but the websites you can click this one this one this one and you can compare all the features and and make that comparison. The star system you said you know four stars five stars. There's all you can only get five stars. Correct. Five and it's is really high. really hard to be a five star it facility. Is. In fact, the average in Connecticut is three stars. I think is what I saw somebody write. We um, are four. So. I, I, there you go. I'm very <laughs> proud about that. Um, so so you would say that was a great way Absolutely. to make the comparison. Yeah, it, I, I totally agree with you um, because it is a daunting you know task. And then you can do the other things, which is just kind of look, when you go to the website, you can look and see what comments are um, in terms of how people, what their experience was with that facility. Um, and, and then even you can get to specific areas of like, if you need physical therapy or OT or whatever the, the aspect of your journey is you can you can actually get right down to that kind of level so 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 you talked a little bit about the people so what is it what's in the secret sauce they've most of them have been there a long time um and we just really all get along quite well um and i, I think everyone really enjoys working and it's a great atmosphere so yeah. i think once you're there you're kind of there for a while yeah so you guys, you know, the, the team goes out into the community and you don't necessarily know where you're going and what you're, you know, the, what the environment's going to be that you're going to go into, right? Correct. So how, do, how does that work from a safety standpoint? Because I hear a lot right now about safety and security. There's a tremendous amount of focus on that actually in the state legislature right now. Uh, so how does that? So when we look at a referral, we'll look at you know, possibly the environments. Where is it coming from? Where's the referral coming back? Do they have a site component? Is there a concern that maybe we need to send a second person out with that nurse? Yeah. So that sometimes we'll team up and just say, okay, maybe we should just send two nurses out to do this. Yeah. 
just to make sure. And also, too, we've always educated everyone to say, if you're uncomfortable, you know, your gut, go with your gut. You don't need to go in the house. You can turn around and leave. Yeah. And then call the office and we go from there. Yeah, so it, it's kind of interesting. The um, the amount of violence against healthcare workers is pretty significant. And it's actually um, as much as four and five times that of other workers. And uh, so it's, it's quite the subject and, you know, how to control and manage that. And what I've learned about um, Bristol Health home care and hospice is that you all do a really effective job. Not that it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. but um, the system that you have is very effective. Um, and people are very educated about it, so it's Yes, it's I mean, and I think if you've done home care for a while, you know when you shouldn't go somewhere. Yeah. You just know. I mean, I've been a home care nurse for, I hate to say, eight, 38 years, and yeah. I've had a few incidences that I absolutely refuse to go in the home. Yeah, and, and, and I guess the overarching point is that you know, in order for society to kind of make this kind of a service available, it's really important for the individuals that are receiving it to make sure that their environment is safe. So like, for example, you go into a house and there's a, uh, a, a dog that's aggressive, mm. um, you know, please, you know, make sure that that dog is not in the house when you go in. Or put into another room. Into another room, right. yeah. I mean, and, and, and so that, that's all part of the discussion you have before you actually go out to the house. Yes. So you, you yeah. actually have that discussion. And then the nurse that's assessing the case, when she's on the phone might say, you know, if you have any guns, please lock them, you know, yeah. um, illegal drugs, things of that sort, you know. That never happens. We don't want to see that. We don't <laughs> yeah. want that. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's really, it's, you know, when I think about the person who basically goes into anybody's home, um, I have the utmost respect because they're doing incredible work that's absolutely necessary, um, but they don't necessarily know what they're going into. So um, it's and, and it's important for more individuals to enter this workforce because that's one of our biggest issues is, you know, the supply. I mean, if we, we how many I, we have some vacancies right now, so we could really use more people. Um, but I think it's hard because they really struggle sometimes with that, you know, that transition from I'm in an environment where I have security, safety and everything else and going on into it. So um, so any other you know, last thoughts or comments about, you know, what the viewing audience would want to know about home care? Well, I think the most important thing is, you know, call, call your physician, call our office and ask questions because you don't know what you don't need if you don't ask the questions. A lot of times I'll feel a lot of questions, patients calling or just an individual calling, what should I do in this situation? I'm going to be having this kind of a surgery. I'm just, what would I need? Yeah. And then you fill them in so that they're a little bit more prepared. That's great. That's really great advice because I hear that a lot in the community. You know, people ask me, they'll say, well, so-and-so has these issues and the, uh, you know, the family's struggling with it. And you, you know, the first thing I say is call because you, you just don't know. So, Correct. Um, so this has been really great having this conversation and, um, and, and anybody can learn more by either going to our website or calling our home care um, uh, office and people are very responsive from, from everything that I've seen. So, so thank you so much for being here today, You're Linda. And thank you to the viewing audience for joining us for this episode of Bristol Health Cares. Um, this, this, uh, this program is all about you, so please write us at cares at bristolhospital.org if you'd like me to cover a topic or bring somebody on to, to this program and, and talk through what you might wanna, wanna learn about. So, uh, and I also wanna say you know, special thanks to uh, Nutmeg TV for hosting this program. Uh, they do an amazing job. It's an amazing organization, and it deserves all of our community support to keep it going. So, so please, um, so pick up the phone, make a donation, support this program, and you'll be supporting Bristol Health Cares as well. So, have a wonderful day. 